Hey, welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways. The local time change has just occurred, which is a little weird because even though it doesn't affect what time I get up in the morning, today it affects what time I leave the house, which means that I've had to sit around for an hour and a half doing other things before doing morning hike exercise stuff because I had to leave the house early. Uh, Let's talk a little bit more about agility. And uh, this is a really hard one because, you know, I have to... I'm trying to get at some stuff here that's beyond the idea of, of homesteading or deliberately moving to a homestead. And it's beyond the idea of political instability or social instability in the United States. Both of those are very relevant factors, okay? Both of those are very key to, to you know, the, the necessity for agility, to talk about agility. Um, you know, but being able to handle, I don't know, slings and arrows of fate isn't really what I'm getting at. Being more active and self-determinant in your life does tend, in my opinion, my experience, to be much easier if you do have a high degree of agility. So, you know, one of the things about that is living the light, okay? People have so much stuff. And here's the thing, stuff is sometimes a symptom of uh, a lack of control or satisfaction or a lack of perception of control. One of the things that people really don't get is that they are absolutely in control of their lives, in the United States at least, in the West at least, almost entirely. It is almost impossible. You have to make a deliberate effort to actually starve yourself to death in the United States. And, you know, I, do, I don't want to, I don't want to cause the uh, fear programs to light off in your brain right now. But I want you to understand that at the very absolute root limit, if you're willing to treat your body decently, you know, go wash, use a toothbrush, do the basic things, you could survive and even thrive in America completely homeless, owning nothing but the clothes on your back. Just want to put it out there, okay, that this is this is not even in the realm of difficulty. It is uncomfortable. It is socially uncomfortable. You've been programmed so that um, having more stuff is it is is necessary. It's really funny because in the early 20th century, when when there was still more mobility, um, I hate to say it this way, but mobility was single males. Okay, wandering. When it was still more socially acceptable, there was actually a discrimination against hobos or bindle steps, people who did carry around a bunch of stuff. If you were traveling, you know, if you were you were off going to find a job or going to find a place to settle or whatever, and you were a guy and you, you know, hitched rides on trains or whatever, and you had a, a suitcase at the least, a briefcase, um, and a suit of clothes, set of clothes, doesn't have to be a suit that came that varies over time, which which particular articles of clothing are involved, you were okay. But if you started making bundles, if you started doing the whole hobo thing, if you started trying to pack around stuff, it was looked down upon because, of course, the idea was that your your profession, your goal was to was to stay mobile that way. And gypsies regardless of how you look at it, whether it's cars, carts, backpacks, they've always been looked down upon by society, and that's fine. Most people can't live on the edges. I don't, I'm not really gonna get into that one too much, but, you know, that lightness of just being able to move used to be considered more highly uh, than it is now. So I want you to remember that you can absolutely lose everything and move on 
and survive just fine. It's a very difficult thing for people to really get their heads around and vision to sit down and be like, everything's gone. You know, grab a backpack and go. Very difficult. And it's difficult even if you've done it, okay? I've got butterflies in my stomach right now just talking about it, all right? Be, be, mostly because I've done it and I'm capable of just going and doing it again, which is kind of scary sometimes. But um, that lightness, you know, leads us to the concept of appropriate materialism. And appropriate is a word that has been used in the um, environmentalist or green community in a very dangerous and horrible way. So I don't want to say appropriate like I'm judging you. What I mean by appropriate materialism is appropriate for your liberty and freedom. Freedom of movement is constrained when you can't move because you can't get rid of enough stuff. Just for an example. Um, you know, I go back to a friend I had and, and remembering a cross-country move that went really bad and led to three, four years of absolute hell. And they never, that family has never actually recovered from the experiences and the, the holding on. And the absolutely overpacked moving van that they had come to get their stuff, which they ended up in storage with water damage and everything for half a decade, oh, so on and so forth, and all the drama. And, man, I don't know, just horrible, horrible stuff. Then the thing is that after that, they ended up with a U-Haul and a trailer doing their move, and that's just crazy, right? After a full moving truck, and I mean full. So, you know, I, I look at something like that and I think that's, you know, you, you've lost your freedom when you can't get rid of a set of screwdrivers when the time is right and go buy a new set of screwdrivers. You've lost your freedom. So appropriate materialism, you know, I'm not saying that anyone should live in rags as a matter of agility. I'm not suggesting anyone do anything right now. But if you want to be functionally agile, then an appropriate materialism is to get yourself to a point where you can move in the vehicle you own or a backpack or some something that you are capable of handling. And think it through, minimize. You don't necessarily want to get rid of the stuff right now, you know, depending on how you're doing with with life and how society looks like it's actually going, you may not want to get rid of anything. Uh, though it's probably a good idea to, to start to get over the selling of some things just to get your agility there. And this is this is the probably one of the biggest things towards to prepping, actual prepping in terms of modern social um, instability, okay? That ability to move. Because society's not gonna break down into zombie land, okay? We're going to have we're going to have breakages and they're going to be significant, but it's not going to be zombie land. So the ability to move to to different resources is more important than um, you know, being able to survive in the wilderness for six months alone right now. So breaking the training is a really, really important thing. And it's a really, once again, it's kind of a tough one. So spring is coming. It should be at some point warm enough for you to go sit in the sun. Sit in the sun. What do you need to sit in the sun? You know, a pair of shorts. What do you need to sit in the sun? Sit back, have a warm day. You know, a shirt, shoes, pants. What do you need to go take a walk? What do you need to just walk through your day? What do you actually need? I'm not going to try to suggest anyone give up their cell phone yet. Uh, I'm, I'm actually starting to wean myself a little bit because I think there's some, some stuff going on there that's negative. But, you know, what do you need to go through your day? And if you're going to carry a cell phone, what do you need? What do you actually need? Do you need a spare battery pack? Do you need a spare charger? You know, minimize that. Now, what do you need to spend the night somewhere? I have, since I first started driving when I was 16 years old, I've had a little overnight bag. I try to keep with me in a vehicle or something. And, you know, I could, in a laptop bag, pretty much live if I really 
really needed to. I'd have to do laundry every third day. Um, but I could. You know, what do you need to spend the night? Start there. Start looking at what do you actually need. And then be grateful. Practice gratitude, man. Be grateful that you have the other things you have. I'm not saying thank some external being. Gratitude isn't a, a uh, isn't submission, okay? It's just gratitude. Like, hey, I'm happy. I've got these things. Practice some grat gratitude towards all the things that you have that are in excess of this stuff, you know. But try not to get attached to it, any of it, okay? What is your minimum that you need to take off to a new city if they open the camps tomorrow? You know, and that sounds crazy, but what if what if it happens? You know, I don't dismiss this stuff. All the all the crazy scenarios happen to people around the world in their lifetimes. We've had a pretty good run. And even with the Americans, it happens to a lot of people in their lifetimes. You're not necessarily excluded. Um, so I'm not, I'm not trying to suggest anything bad is going to happen. I'm not saying that you need to go start the revolution tomorrow. However, I want you to think about agility. Think about it from this idea. Appropriate materialism. What do you actually need? What actually helps? What's holding you down? What can you replace? What could you use otherwise? You know, um, a lot of people, for example, swimming pools. It's a big deal in the desert southwest to own a swimming pool. But a lot of people I know, they own a pool, but they use it a couple times a month. And if you're going to use a pool a couple times a month, why don't you just go find a pool to use? You know, either... I don't necessarily mean going to an overcrowded city pool, but, you know, if I'm going to swim once a month, twice a month, I couldn't use a gym, you know? Uh, pool memberships are a thing. I could also use a hotel if I'm traveling, because I do travel multiple times a month. Think this stuff through, you know, what, what are the things that you really need, and what things can you use without owning, you know? That's, that's, that's kind of a, that's a really tough one for Western culture, actually. We, we want to own and control everything. Think about that one for a minute. Um, breaking the training. Breaking the training. Sit in the sun and figure out what do you need to sit in the sun? What do you need to just sit in the warm in the sun? And then, you know, what do you need to take a walk? I'm going to go walk up a hill here in a minute. Um, right now it's a little chilly. I still need a jean jacket, windbreaker, whatever you want to call it. Um, but what else do you need? Like, what do you actually need? How much do you need to carry? How light can you go? And uh, if you want a prescription, if you want something to do, if you want something to do that's going to help you with homestead uh, preparations, agility, the potential for civil unrest, and mental health, uh, not mental health, spiritual health. If you want a prescription, I'm going to say unload. Get rid of, make a little target, get rid of some stuff. Just get rid of some stuff. Don't make a big deal out of it yet. But clear some space, you know? Clear some space out. It'll help you and it'll help your soul. The reprogramming part is going to be really difficult because that programming is intense and deep. And, um, wow, the, you know, the, your whole life, from the, from, from the time you're a couple months old, Everything in our market-driven society is about acquisition and grasping, and that's a lot of deprogramming, and you're going to have to just kind of fucking do it. But deprogram. Break the training, you know. Go out with less stuff. Leave yourself on home. Go for a walk. Stay sideways. <laughs>